Who found the grave? I asked, sidestepping around the site. I was wearing the Oxfords I put on when working so my heels wouldn't sink into the well-trimmed, damp grass, which was the greenest I'd ever seen. The Vancouver rain obviously promoted striking greenery, even in early October. But I was glad it was currently only misting. Caretaker, Dalton said, phoned it in his vandalism to the West Van police yesterday. It filtered down from there. Any disturbed gravesite draws attention, of course. They sent out a necromancer first, then us, when she didn't pick up anything unusual. Dalton was an unusual witch name, so I assumed it was his first, not his last. Though I didn't recognize it as a founder surname, either. He was the secondary investigator, probably more skilled technically than magically. His main duties included collecting evidence and securing the location while the lead investigator interpreted the facts and clues, then decided when a case needed the attention of a specialist. A specialist? Like me. I'd arrived in Vancouver at half past four in the afternoon, secured a rental car at the airport, and immediately followed my GPS halfway up the mountain on which the suburb of West Vancouver was situated. I'd parked by the administration building rather than blocking the single paved lane that wove through the cemetery. The Caution Bear In Area sign at the entrance had left me momentarily disconcerted, but thankfully I was able to easily spot Dalton among the rows and rows of flush-mounted headstones. I'd arrived just before 5.30. The sun would be setting around 6.40, so I needed to be efficient with my collection. But I was always efficient. So, as long as the team hadn't bungled anything before my arrival, I had no expectation of any problems with making my 7 p.m. dinner reservation. This was my second time in Vancouver, and I wasn't going to pass up the opportunity to indulge in some great food. Even a reconstructionist had to have priorities. <laughs>